Welcome to the Once Upon an Island podcast. I'm your host, Wesley. And of course, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Mary. And next week, Mary will be back on the weekly breakdown podcast. The main one that Rebecca has been doing this season. And Rebecca will be doing winter analysis. It's just a one week thing. It's purely scheduling all seasons, just figuring out scheduling with my co-host. But Mary, how do you feel about Banu? He's gone. <laughs> how do I feel about Banu? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm glad he's gone because it was a lot of drama, but at the same time, I'm, I don't know. I still like, I'm not defending Banu. I'm just saying I like him as a person. So I still like Banu. Nothing's really changed. I know he's an emotional wreck and I don't want to play Survivor with him. No, I don't want to play Survivor with him. But I still like Banu. Yeah. I think Banu is probably a cool friend. I just terrible at this game. And it, it was even made worse when. He was like, I'm a super fan. I've seen every season. It's like, man, I wish you had never said that. Because that's like, that makes it worse. Had you it? very casually watched the show? No, he declared on the show he's seen every season and he's a super fan. Yeah, no, I'm saying, does it make it worse? It does because it's like, then you really should know better. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like when a child messes up first and is an adult on the same thing. It's like, well, one of you should have known better, you know? And I'm not saying Bonnie was a child or, you know, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying try and give a comparison. It's kind of like that. It's like expectations are different when you are, say you're a sure, super fan. Sure. I expect more, I guess. Because uh, he's breaking down over the small stuff, making the simplest mistakes. I just feel like it's it's personality and mindset. Like you can just really, really love chocolate ice cream. It doesn't mean you're good at making chocolate ice cream. I don't, I don't mm. know. If that, maybe that's a bad Al analogy, but like. Oh, I see what you're saying, though. He enjoys watching the show. Does mean he's good at playing the show? Okay. No, that works, too. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. That all was right. my thought. But Well, anyways, Mary and I are going to rank all 14 remaining players. And we're going to talk about the secret scenes because, again, this week, I think there's at least one that is applicable to winter analysis. Hey, every week this season, there's been at least one that's applicable to winter analysis. Yeah. But Mary, now that Bonnie is out of the way, mm-hmm. how do you feel about Survivor 46 after the first four episodes? Well, I still feel like it's just kind of the Nami show. We don't hear a lot from Sia and... We hear a lot from Yanu because they keep losing. And to me, like, that's fine because that's how this season has gone. It's just a little frustrating to once again have a tribe that's been totally decimated. And so by default, we focus on them so much. I mean, Bonham had 35 confessionals. because That's, by the way, in the top right hand corner here on YouTube, that's the confessional counter. Shows you how many times people have talked to the camera uh, in each episode. Bonham, I think, didn't he have like 35? Yeah. I mean, geez. Yeah. And that's for somebody who went out in the fourth episode. Do you think we could have shared the love with other people who are right. actually going to matter long term? <laughs> exactly. That, so it was definitely a heavily favored towards Manu the last couple of episodes. I mean, he got 10 this week and 13 last week, which is just, I think 13's the Would most. Would have been better served on players who were actually going to matter. Yeah, come exactly. Merge. Like, why, why did we have to? It was basically just because they wanted you to feel good about Banu because... I don't know why. Well, he stroked Survivor's ego hard in that I first guess episode. So. Yeah. And as we know, Survivor loves having its ego stroked. Right. So that's 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 it for Bono. I guess I am glad. I want to see how this continues. I'm hoping there'll be some kind of tribe swap or something no, to mix I think things up. I, I think that time's coming gone. It probably has come and gone. Because the merge Tory, all new era, the whole new era, the budget era, has been episode six and next week's episode five. Yeah. So we're going to tribe swap for what, one episode? I yeah. think we're, we're past that time. It would have happened. It would have happened. That's true. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, watch me be wrong and they change the merge story. But they're in such a strict time schedule, 26 days. They don't mm-hmm. have that much room to wiggle. It's just not going to be very much fun if next week Yana loses again. Bruh. It's going to be pretty predictable. But with the way the editing has gone, that's kind of how it feels like it's was going to happen. I mean, maybe did, not me, but. They did take time this week to set up Siga and Nami, who the lowest person on their totem poles are. That could become relevant. We'll talk about that as we yeah. go through winter analysis. But it could become relevant come next week. If we get what we want, which is not Yanu going to tribal next week, then it'll be a better episode. But if Yanu goes again, holy cow, Like, how could I not make a video about how bad they are? Mm -hmm. I was like debating it. I'm like, they're not as fun as Lulu. Like a video about them wouldn't be as fun. But if they go again, it's like, oh, I feel like I kind of have to. Yeah. You know, like every episode of the pre-merge they lost. That's like that's an oolong situation, except. Oolong never got relief. They True. will get relief. There is going to be a merger story at some point. Mm-hmm. 
So anyways, all right, Mary, these secret scenes that they post on Survivor YouTube's channel Mm -hmm. and I believe on EW.com. Can you tell me about them? There's only two this week. Yes. So the first one is Ben, the provider. It's a secret scene about Ben being the provider. There you go. (laughs) That's basically it. I mean, um, there's there's a fun comment in there that Charlie's like, what is this? Ben is out there in his shorts and his high tops and his cut off T-shirt providing for us and it's it's just cool ben is the sifu of the season yeah yeah. Uh, yeah basically yeah so that was it the other one which is a lot more telling is um is basically tim kind of unburdening himself to his tribe about how he really misses his family and this experience has made him realize how he wants to change jobs because apparently in his job he travels all the time and so, you know, he's realizing how much his family matters. And that is a long scene. It's like it, three minutes. It was a very long secret scene. And it was very like, oh, wow. Now we know more about Tim. I feel like once again, Tim's personal content is being cut from the show, which is not great for Tim's chances, yes. obviously. And it Tim's was very heartwarming. Scene is the one I was thinking of. I said it was relevant. Yeah, it was very heartwarming. His try was like, you know, all surrounding him saying, you can do this. You know, Ben, if you want to quit your job, you do it. You know, kind of like encouraging him and. And he was crying and it was like really heartfelt. I'm like, I, I would have enjoyed this on the regular show. You know, I would have enjoyed getting to know Tim a little bit more versus hearing once again about Bonu and how he's going home. So, yeah, th- this was a an interesting secret, sen- secret scene in the sense that, you know, why was this cut from the show? Mm-hmm. Because Tim's not important. Yeah, that's that's basically it. Is why it was cut from the show. Yeah. And they're still going to show up because it's sweet and it's heartwarming. But who's Tim? Yeah, he, he doesn't matter in the overall overall story apparently. Because Ben scene, I could see being cut. I'm not, not that I think Ben's a strong tender to win, mm-hmm. but his scene did not seem important, right, for the story. But Tim's, if Tim was to win, this would have been left in the story, right? Exactly. So Tim's not winning. No, Keep that in mind. Probably not. So those are our secret scenes. We only had two this week. All right. Well, let's start off with the first person in our alphabetical order, Mary. And that person is... Ben. All right. Give me all the stats. Ben is on Sega, has his shot in the dark, no advantages or idols. And he currently has 14 confessionals, a little bit on the lower end from everyone else. Although there are still people who are lower than him. (laughs) No, yeah, Ben does not have the least, but Ben has not, Ben's been set up as a fun character, but not a winning character, in my opinion. So what are your thoughts on Ben? So Ben's one confessional from this week was talking about Mo and how she was bad at jumping. So even in his confessional, it's like, why does this matter? You know, Mm. Mo and her jumping, it doesn't really matter. Um, In his content that was not confessional, he is shown to be like the encouragement of his tribe. He was the one kind of helping Maria work through the process of her failing and he was being really, you know, kind and encouraging to her. So, you know, we constantly see that he's likable and that he's kind to all of his tribe mates, but you know, his content gets cut. It gets put in secret scenes. We're shown when people approach him about strategy, he just doesn't talk to them. Basically he doesn't know what to say. So his, his content being so little and then what his content is, is just not very strategic. It's just, Oh yeah, he's a nice person. That's all we've got from yeah. Ben. So yeah, he's a fun character, but even his, you know, funness is being cut down. We don't see or hear much from him. It's like he only got screen time when he was name dropping. Yeah. <laughs> now, if he dropped name drop Taylor Swift like Charlie does, he would complete the trifecta. Sure. But Charlie's the one getting all the Taylor Swift content. Yeah. And we'll get to Charlie. We'll get to Charlie. But yeah, Ben, uh, Ben is a character. Mm-hmm. Ben is not a winning player. Exactly. Based on the story we are seeing. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Ben's great, by the way. Okay. He seems like a lot of fun. Again, right? just really like cool Sifu. Guy. I think mm-hmm. it'd be a lot of fun. I just don't. There's nothing being presented here as right. Ben's going to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, but remember, our track record does include us putting Gabler at the bottom of our list. Sure. Going into the finale. So we're not perfect. Anything's possible. We could be wrong. <laughs> yes. I would have preface all of our rings with that like i think we're on the right track but uh we could be wrong and ben doesn't have any like uh he doesn't have any red herrings or anything like that does he for winter content that we talk about um he's had his sob story but other than that proper one with the with pictures yes okay Mm -hmm. that was in episode two Mm, i almost forgot Mm -hmm. but other than that i really didn't have even in episode one he really didn't have because there were several people in episode one that got some little hint type things but no he I think, yeah, he has nothing. 
The entire budget era has taught us, though, that you need an emotional backstory Mm -hmm. to qualify. That is a basic qualification to win in the story. So if you don't get one, you're not going to win. But it's easier said than done than to understand, I guess, because an emotional backstory can happen any time. We can just be blindsided with one. Mm -hmm. We got two this week. We haven't gotten those players yet, Mm -hmm. but it could just happen at any moment. So Ben's already gotten one. They got it out of the way, which does not necessarily mean he he was going to go early. Because mm-hmm. last season, I think particularly, we saw players just not get one ever. True. And then they got voted off, you know, and some people got hidden in their theirs were hidden in secret scenes. So and they went far. Uh, so it's very hit and miss. We just all we know is that you need to have one to win. Yes. That is a requirement in the mm-hmm. story of modern survivor. It's like uh, America's got talent. <laughs> you got to have a sob story. You can't just win on talent alone. And that. Sh- all right. So, Ben, how do you have, where do you have him ranked? He's 13th for me. Same for me. 13th for me. All yeah. right. Who? Oh, and Rebecca only, I only got her top three. She's very busy today, so I don't have, Ben's not in her top three. Yeah. All right. Who is next? Next, we have Charlie. Charlie, Charlie. is on. Mr. The, Taylor Swift. Yep. See, uh, uh, still has a shot in the dark, but no other advantages. And he has 17 confessionals. I didn't catch this, but Charlie actually yelled Taylor Swift's name as he jumped off the crate last night. No, <laughs> did he? <laughs> I, neither you nor me nor Rebecca caught it because wow. Rebecca and I did not talk about it at all yesterday. But, oh, and for those wondering, you can listen to these podcasts a day early on Patreon. It's ad free. Link in the description uh, for all free patrons. Anyways, so he yells it and I didn't even know until I went on Twitter today to look at everyone's reactions to the episode and he is defending himself. He's like, oh, people are getting mad at me for 0.2 seconds of a 90 minute episode. And it's like, dude, it's not all your fault. It's just we're all burnt out. Taylor Swift. Yeah. And how is he to know right. in June of 2023 that Taylor Swift was right. going to take over the NFL and just be the talk of the town for too way too long. So most people don't even care. Some people right now are like, stop talking about her. But it's like that's part of his story that they're presenting is mm-hmm. Taylor Swift. He's a huge Swifty. Uh, in the show, man, did they edit this before Taylor Swift became old? You know, like boring to listen about. I, I don't hear about Taylor. I Swift. I didn't know she was boring to listen about. Now, well, I still see I her stuff constantly. Mary doesn't care. I don't care. <laughs> Rebecca loves her, and I'm. I think I'm in the middle. Like I enjoy some of her music, but it's kind of like, eh. You know, why, why, why it's stuff they could cut around. They chose left it to leave it in. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. It's not a big deal. I it's just, not, pre- it's not Charlie. I just fault. see a lot of reactions to it and yeah. I wanted to bring it up. Gotcha. All right. So especially since Rebecca and I didn't even mention it and Rebecca is the Swifty. Mm-hmm. So Charlie, he seems like he's in a pretty good position on his tribe. Yes. He is in alliance with, as we, as far as we know, cause they haven't gone tribal yet. With Maria on it, like an inner layer of their alliance. Mm-hmm. And then the outer layers, Jungle Gem and Mariah. Mm-hmm. Or Mo, I guess some people call Machete her. Moe. Machete Mo. Machete oh, Mo. That sounds a little. They don't marry have... anyone with the name Machete Mo. <laughs> they all have these, those jungle names. I don't remember all of them, but. Yeah, didn't Ben give them all out? I think so. Or like episode two or something like that? <laughs> yeah. I just remember that one because it was fun. There's been a lot of comments I noticed today on the Rebecca's and I's podcast. It's like, ah, it's Christmas. Bonu is gone. So <laughs> really, I think people are trying to move on. Yeah. I just keep seeing all so the comments. Flooding. Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, he's yeah. in a good spot in his position on his tribe. So from as far I, as we know, as far as we know, what I kind of gleaned from this episode is, you know, we know Sega is not that important. They're not going to go to tribal. We don't get a lot of content from Sega. All of their members have very low confessional counts. But... Charlie's content that he gets this week is usually positive. So what we heard from him this week about how he helped um, Mo to practice jumping. And, you know, they didn't have to show that or leave that in, but mm-hmm. it was just like the kind thing to do. And Jem is over there, you know, kind of laughing or making fun. And Charlie is saying, hey, we're being supportive. We're trying to help her sure. boost her confidence, which is something a good player should be doing. They should be interacting with the other players, making friends, making them feel loved and respected and, you know, encouraged and helping out because that's how you build relationships that's how you stick you know and last even if mo's on the bottom of the alliance you know just working with her because you never know what might happen so he's building relationships and that's what we're shown so uh, the one other thing he had in his confessional this week was narrating the idol the fake idol hunt that Mm -hmm. they went through and how everyone's frustrated which he narrated last week too he's like this is all fake yes so once again we're hearing from charlie about it versus anyone I mean, else right we hear from jen because she's the one that sent everyone on the fake idol hunt yeah. but 
And we hear from Mo like one time about how Jeff doesn't hide but idols randomly. But yeah, we don't hear did from Did Maria get skunked this week? I, I can't see the question. No, comment. she actually did. She did not get skunked this okay. week. But her content was about her, her and the challenge. How basically. many people got skunked this week? So this week we had Tim and Venus. Oh, man, you spoiled who it's going to be. That's okay. You asked. Well, I just meant how many. I didn't want to know oh, the names sorry, yet. Sorry. I was going to guess, but that's okay. I knew Venus was one of them. Sorry. That's we okay. Tim, I also could have easily guessed who if you told me to. Right. So once again, Charlie's content, while very basic at this point, is still pretty good. Um, and I feel like he's in a good spot. So all of Sega's content feels very basic. Yes, it does feel very basic. It feels very much like they because they have to show this tribe and they got 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Now, Rebecca and I theorized yesterday, Mary. Let me know if you feel the same way mm-hmm. that maybe the show was now well, Jeff said right before 45 aired that 46 is going to be 60 minutes unless CBS changes their mind. Mm-hmm. I don't know when CBS changed their mind. Right. Clearly. I don't, I don't know when I assume it's before they told the rest of the public, like I'm sure it wasn't a public announcement and that <laughs> and production oh, found yeah. out that day. Sure. But that makes me wonder how much time was spent on 46 planning out everything to be 60 minutes from the producers and editors and whatnot. And then they were told, by the way, you're doing 90 or even two hours. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Oh crap. We need to go back and add stuff in. Sure. And I mention this because the Mo jumping scene is irrelevant mm-hmm. to the challenge. And it, it doesn't feel like the D big toe scene where we're p- painting some positive spotlight on Mo and, oh, it's because she's actually really important. Wink, wink. Or Tony, when Tony um, did weird things in Winners of War, it's like, why are we spending time on this? You know, wink, wink. Why are we spending so much time? It doesn't feel like that. Now, I could be wrong. Well, Maybe the, this is that. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It feels like a filler scene they, that they added in to b- but b- they, build time. But they cut personal content from Tim, which would have been much more interesting to watch than no. learning, What's another Mo learning sad to story? job. In, in favor of Charlie being the kind, compassionate, fun person he is and helping You're to teach her. You're saying this is less about Mo, this more about Charlie. This is less about Mo, more about Charlie. That was my view of it, which is why I have Charlie ranked third. Charlie, for me, is ranked sixth. He's <laughs> moved up, if I recall, maybe. I don't know. But, no, yeah, he's moved up. <sighs> I don't know. You I just don't want to see I feel good about winning, I guess. Yeah. And I was hoping, after all of the flack that I got last week in both podcasts about how I don't understand Venus, and then I did a poll, and ma- vast majority agreed she's a villain who's going to lose, I was like, all right, well, that's fine. Be a villain who can lose, people can still like that, obviously. Yeah. Look at like Russell Hans. So I watched this week. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing from Venus at all. But Charlie, I kind of get, but it just feels like he's on the wrong tribe. Like they don't, it doesn't seem like Sega's ever important. All their stuff is like old or it's basic or even here. So if maybe Charlie is important, but is he winner important? I don't sure. think so. Sure. That's where I struggle. I feel I struggle with anybody on Sega being winner important. Mm-hmm. So that's the, fair. Charlie is six, which is actually pretty favorable, I might add. But he just, it feels like he's on the wrong tribe. So for you, you said he's number three. Three. Wow. You really got him high. Rebecca does not have him in their top three. Okay. Who is next? Next, we have Hunter on Nami, has his shot in the dark, and no idols or advantages. Mm. And he is tied for the lowest confessionals at only six. With he had one this week, yeah, and that actually does greatly affect my winner analysis of him. Does he's it? a sidekick to Tevin, mm-hmm. and if he was to win, I feel like they would show him to be as equally as important. But we could have a turnaround where Tevin gets voted off at some point, and then Hunter becomes, mm-hmm. you know, a main character. Yeah. I don't know, has that happened before? Top of my head, I can't recall a winner who's been the sidekick, and then the main person got voted off and they won. But that's off the top of my head. Right. I, that's 43, 44 winners, however many winners it's been. Mm-hmm. Wieners. Wieners. Um, so, Hunter, what do you think about him? So, I, I'm still pretty high on Hunter, mainly because he is Tevin's number one. He seems to be Tevin's number one alliance member. Um, and I think Tevin is going to go far. We've, we've talked about this before. Tevin and Hunter should definitely make it to the merge and i think they'll probably make it farther if hunter can beast out some immunities and make it until he's you know in a majority that doesn't think he could win because of tevin's social game and then like very later in the game he gets like tevin pull a gabler. Out. yeah i'm like mapping it out for him because this is what i want i think he could win because he's likable he's good in the challenges 
he had from what we've seen his only strategy is being tight with tevin which is a good strategy and he doesn't really care for soda's camp song so when tevin yes. said let's vote <laughs> off soda he's like okay yeah <laughs> that's not the reason he said he, i know he didn't he didn't want anyone else to be tevin's number one so yeah. that's his strategy is to be tight with the guy who's tight with everyone else yeah which is a good strategy. Lay low. So he's laying low. I, I feel like he has a good chance because he's laying low at this point. And he, they're constantly winning. So obviously he's going to make it to the merge. Um, oh, yeah. Could it, you imagine Nami losing next week and Hunter being the main target? Yeah, no. At the moment, no. I don't see it. Just because his confessional count is low. I'm you need sh- like a Venus Idol play because no one on Nami has true. the big word advantage. You need like a Venus Idol play to get Hunter at this moment to get him mm-hmm. out based Which on is, socially what we've seen. Right. And, and that's possible. Of course, I, I think Venus would probably go after soda before she go after Hunter. But Though Venus did express last week that she sees through Hunter's facade. Mm-hmm. That's true. Even though that was kind of a negative scene on her. And I was stand behind that. People argued against it. And I'm like, no, it's like, sure. She's smart, but she's also super negative all the mm-hmm. time. Right. Well, because she was, well, she was saying that Hunter's facade is, I am the provider of the tribe and yeah. that's all I am. And and obviously he's smarter than that. So anyways. And she also was like so <clears throat> negative towards Randon when she was like, can't you tell idiot? Though she didn't say those exact words, but that was the way she was going about it. It's sure. like, you can't see his facade. Like, right. All right. Niceness, you know, kindness is a virtue. Yeah. Is it not? Maybe not, but it should be. It should be. So anyways, Hunter, another thing we have to mention every week, his name's the only one in the theme song that's higher than everyone else's, yes. though it's not the top like D's, mm-hmm. but also with Hunter. He's one of the people who has a slow-mo shot at the beginning of mm-hmm. the theme song, which last season when they did that was three of the final was all was the whole final three plus one other person. I forgot who the other person was top of my head. Yeah. But there was the final three plus one other person. So Hunter could be the plus one other person if they're doing the same thing again. I don't know. But then this this week during the immunity challenge, they used that same shot. This is where the shot clearly came from mm-hmm. of the slow-mo. But Venus also got a slow-mo shot. Mm-hmm. The only two people who got one. In this episode, in the th- in the immunity challenge, now that is not winner analysis. The the the, the slow mo shot being in the immunity challenge because they do that all the time for people who don't win. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just like who looks good falling in slow mo yeah. because some people make terrible faces when they're jumping. I watched <laughs> Tim do it, and Tim, for example, had like both his arms up in the air, and I'm like, probably it didn't look that great. Yeah, but Hunter has like this like mm. epic, and Venus looks epic, and yeah, yeah, that's that's I would guess that's probably for what immunity that was, challenge. But. Yes, they don't do. Winter analysis is not usually in the immunity challenge. Yeah. Though once in 41, when they tried getting out Erica, they tried throwing it and they failed to throw it like that was. But that was like the only time I can really think of. Yeah. Well, the only other thing I think that that came up in the immunity challenge is when Tevin like shouts out loud, you guys, it's fine. As soon as Hunter gets the balls, this is over. (laughs) It's game over. Yeah. Which is great because you're, you know, encouraging your try because you're behind. But at the same time, it's like. You don't have to broadcast that your number one alliance member is a beast at challenges. Like, sure, everybody's going to see it. It probably is not going to hurt anything. But to me, it's just kind of like a little bit maybe over the top. Like, that's not something you Tevin have to was just thinking be. about that in the moment. He was I just know. like, don't stop sweating. About I know. It. I know. I know. Hunter's just, a sharpshooter. Right. Exactly. But that's, the, and again, all the other tribes know Hunter is. The, but how do you hide that? Yeah, Hunter to yeah. the merge. And I want to see how he does in these individual immunity challenges. Me too. Because he is just dominating the team challenges. He is. Yeah. And this is not like Jonathan in 42, who's just a hulking man. So some challenges he naturally was, be- were better, mm-hmm. was better at. Like when they were all struggling in the ocean, the ocean was not pushing Jonathan at that time. Right, like yeah. he was pushing the ocean. <laughs> you don't push Jonathan. Jonathan pushes you kind of thing. <laughs> but here it's like Hunter's just good at the ridiculous carnival games that they provide. Yes in survivor to mm-hmm. play hunters practice the carnival games he yes. is the carny mm-hmm. or just the carny and hunter hunter is his own carny he carnied it all at home okay you're welcome for all the carny carny <laughs> all right but anyways hunter uh my worry is really the lack of confessionals yes but also it's like this tribe hasn't gone to tribal mm-hmm. hunters laying staying under the radar we've seen under the radar gameplay work time and time again mm-hmm. if he's that much into making challenges for children and practicing them himself, you know, building them himself. He's probably watched. I'm, I'm assuming he's not just addicted to the challenges. I assume right. he's probably just watched Lost Survivor. He's a smart dude. He was going to go to medical school. He understands under the radar mm-hmm. gameplay is actually super effective, mm-hmm. especially pre-merge. Right. It's really late, late, like second half of the post-merge when you want to reveal yourself yes. to everyone and blow their minds and do yes. your game, big gameplay. And, and again, even though he's tied for the least confessionals with Tim, 
we know who T- Hunter is. Yeah, we don't know Tim. who Tim is. Yeah, so I, I don't feel that bad. Now, if we have an, another episode or two where he's like this low content, I might start getting worried. But for me, he's still number two. We get through the mergatory. Or even the episode after the merge story. If like we get through like episode seven and Hunter is still getting this kind of content. Yeah. I don't think he's winning. Yeah. But it's just so hard to tell when Nami seems like they're the other important tribe besides Yanu. And they they just like the show's like we don't really have anything to show you because Yanu's the only one going to tribal. Mm-hmm. Like ever. It seems like even Yanu next week at the rate we're going is going to tribal again. Right. Like it wasn't. Was it Banu who blew it this week? Like I sure Banu didn't do the thing proper. But Nami and, and Yanu got to the platform at the same time yeah. to throw the balls. And Hunter is a sharpshooter. Yes. He beat Tim, who already had time. Mm-hmm. Who already had time to throw. Tim gets second. So, like, Q, in a fair fight against Hunter, lost. Mm-hmm. And then, with a time advantage, couldn't beat Tim, who seemed to be struggling. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know what to tell you. We'll see what next week's challenge is. Right. Though they did win reward. Which just kind of replicates Lulu when they won reward because of all because of Caleb. Yeah. And Q is the one who won them the reward, yeah. to be fair. Mm-hmm. It wasn't Kenzie or T- and Tiffany mm-hmm. or Bono. So. Right. Anyways, all right, who's next? Did you say where you had Hunter ranked? Oh, sorry. Hunter's ranked number three for me. And I really debated moving him down. There's just too many. There's just too much that the Orange Tribe is important. Plus, Hunter has these hints, and I can't mm-hmm. ignore these hints. Right. Agreed. But, because confessional count alone would make me move him down. But he's never been skunked in an episode, right? <clears throat> uh, he's never gotten zero talk. in a confessional. He has never had zero. That's yet. correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even Tevin and Venus have had zero, which is weird. Right. And zero is usually my killer. Like you're mm-hmm. dead. You're dead to me. And it's like, oh, this season, are they throwing us off? Because there's been a lot of red herrings. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Who's next? Next we have Jem. Oh, uh, Hunter for you is what again? He's second. Okay. Next is Gem. Next is Gem. She has the Beware Advantage box, but no idol or advantages. Still has her shot in the dark. And she has 13 confessionals, which is fairly How many high. in this last episode, though? I felt it, like she got most of those. She had eight, yes, yeah. in this past episode. And most of those were about her... Beware Advantage. Beware Advantage and hiding the Beware Advantage. But it was also about how she kind of... I can't say she turned or tricked people into thinking it was Tim... But at the same time, she definitely did Mo a good job. Yeah, Mo brought it up and she kind of ran with it. And she did a good job of bringing it up in conversation. Like Mo and it, it doesn't show who started the conversation in Charlie's Angels. We just kind of jump in the middle of it. But Jim's like, Tim was going at it really hard. Mm-hmm. He was like overcompensating. So I'm pretty sure it's him. Yeah. You know, I just thought that was really smart on her. secret scenes are all important. So they don't want you to feel great about Tim anyways they right. want you to be like Randon where you don't really care right exactly yeah. so for us it's story wise this actually to me was a good episode for Jim she moved up in my rankings so I said last week I said I like Jungle Jim mm-hmm. and this week she had a stellar episode she, had, she has a really good episode it, her risk paid off because that risk could have backfired mm-hmm. it could have been like it, was it you Jim I mean the moment somebody says that well on the next time on Survivor Tim says you have the boar advantage uh huh but Tim is nobody right exactly <laughs> So I think I think Jem is going to be able to handle that fine. I think she's she's shown to be like a pretty good liar at this point. And also next time a survivor lies to us too, they'll they'll do stuff like that. And it's, he'll, he'll just be like, you have to be aware of She's like, no, he's like, no, I didn't really think you did the whole time. They do stuff like that all the time where they just show us what they think will be. But sure. sometimes it's real. It's the yeah. hard part about next time a survivor. Yeah. Th- yeah. I, I think that Jim can handle it is all I'm saying. And I think that. She's not one to be like really flustered by things or get, you know, o- overwhelmed easily. She's I, I think she's a really strong player. She has one kind of hint where she said, I'm your uh, million dollar winner. And that was episode one. She doesn't that was have, the most blatant one. Right. She doesn't have like a, a sob story yet that we've seen. But I mean, I'm it's common. Yeah. I think just as far as a strategic player and a social player. She's got a really good chance. Also, we call them emotional backstories now, please. Oh. Not everyone's is sad. I'm so sorry. Hunters did not make me cry. Hey, you can sob because it's emotional, not because it's sad, but because you're happy. It can still be a sob story. Xander in season 41 did make me cry, though, when he was oh, fat yeah. in middle school yeah. and then stopped being fat when he went through puberty. That was tear jerking. Mm-hmm. But no, emotional backstory. She hasn't had one yet, but I feel like Jem's going to get one. She feels important enough to not skip. Yeah. Whereas does tim get one no no his was already good basically uh and randon did randon ever get one i don't think so uh let me check if he did 
No. I don't remember. Mm-mm. Yeah. So not everyone gets one. That's the thing. I right. feel like. But, but it is a fair point that hasn't happened yet. Right. But it does seem like they're sprinkling them in this season. Mm-hmm. Well, I would so, rather have none, to be fair. But that's not an option, apparently. Sure. So Jim is sixth for me. I think she has a fairly good shot, um, especially, you know, we'll see how the merge shakes out. But I think she's a good player. Jim, Jim, Jim of the jungle is number four for me. Well, you're welcome, America and other countries. OK, Mary, who's next? Next, we have Kenzie. Kenzie is on Yano. She still has her shot in the dark. No at idols or advantages. She has 28 confessionals. Yeah. Yeah. This is a Yanu tribe is hard to read. I mean, like we can take a good guess, but it's hard to read how important they are because we haven't had an episode where they just don't go to tribal. Mm -hmm. And an episode where you don't go to tribal is just as important as one where you go. I need everyone to go and not go. Yes. And that makes it super easy to read. So Mm -hmm. them going every episode has not filtered out at all. I, I mean, my opinion, Kenzie is not the top person from this tribe right. to survive. But what do I know? Right. Well, we've, we've definitely seen Q and Tiffany be tight. They've both talked about how they want to get Kenzie out. Um, you know, they think she might be unable to be trusted once the merge comes. And if they go again, I, I really think it would be Kenzie. Unless we have some dramatic thing where once again, Q's like, I failed. I keep failing. Just vote me out. And Tiffany is like, okay. I'm done with your drama. Yeah. But Tiffany that's a- does not put up with that kind of crap though. Last week with Q, she's like, shut up this week with Bonnie on his knees again. Yes. I love Tiffany. No. And that's what I'm saying. I'm saying she's, she might be like, okay, like I'm done with your crap. I'm oh, done with your oh drama. I see. She's over. Yeah. It. I am over it. So that's the only way I can see Kenzie staying much longer, especially if they lose next week. Um, if they lose next week is Kenzie. Go- that's my other person on my fantasy team. Oh no. No, Bonu and Kenzie. I am so screwed if Kenzie goes out <laughs> next week. That's what I'm saying. There's no more points for me to get. I'm done. I'm a goner. I'm yeah. banking on Kenzie doing all the work now for we my team. We both picked people from Yanu, which is You have Jess and who? Q. Well, Q I feel better about than Kenzie sure. at the moment. Yeah. For those wondering on, on our Patreon, you can sign up. I mean, it's just for fun. There's, yeah, you do have to be a paid patron, but it's just for fun. But yeah, on my fantasy team, which you can still join... And kick my butt probably because I picked so I picked Bonu who did nothing for my team. I think mean, he got me like one point. Like I, I would almost have been better drafting nobody than drafting Bonu. I did not know. He seemed he seemed like Survivor's love child. I don't know how else to say this. They loved him. I thought mm-hmm. he was gonna get so much positive content. I'm like, there's no way Bonu's an early boot. Right. I was wrong. So anyways, anyways Kenzie is the same boat. I feel like if she goes next week. Ah, crap. Well, I was just going to say she did have some positive content this week and both of them had to deal with how how she dealt with Banu. So sure, Banu is annoying. He's frustrating to work with. She snaps at him, but she goes, apologizes, talks to him. And he his response to her is, oh, okay. I believe her. She she loves me. She's wants to work with me. You know, I think Kinsey, but Bonnie was flipping on dime. Yes. Yes. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that Kinsey is really, really good with people mm-hmm. and she's really good at knowing what they want to hear and what she needs to say to them to make them feel good. And that is a good sign that you will go far, because if you know what people want you to say and you can say it well and they you believe you snake through this game. Yeah. You so a mermaid dragging through the game. Exactly. I, I, I can definitely see. I have more hope for her making it past the merge. If for some reason we have a merge. I think he would be gone over Kenzie just right away because he's perceived more of as a threat. But I, I don't think she can outlast Tiffany and Q's alliance. So I'm not really high on her. This is strictly she's at seven for me strictly because I think she's good with people and she's better than some other people. Um, But but yeah, I, I don't really see her winning at this point. I can't believe first four episodes eliminations of four Yanni members. Sorry, my apologies. Three Yanni members should have been four. And Lulu had the same thing last season, but last season Lulu was such chaos, so much mm-hmm. fun to watch. And this season, it's like, man, Yanu, <laughs> bored, bored. I'm over it. Can we anyone else lose now? Basically. So with Kenzie specifically, I like Kenzie. She, I mean, I'm still, I have her about middle of the pack now. She was top three first couple of weeks. She's down to number nine for me. Where's she for you? Seven. Seven. So about middle of the pack for you as well. And Kenzie. I feel like, man, if she can get out of this Yanu group, maybe she could, but she's going to always, I feel like she'll always be on the bottom of something. So she's really going to have to like jump back and forth between things because the Sega tribe and Nami tribe are so locked in. Mm -hmm. There's no, but they haven't had a reason to turn each other. So they've had 10 days, however many days been to just bond over niceties. 
And unlike the Katura and Bruce tribe of last season, the blue and then they turned to yellow, where they clearly there was rifts within that tribe mm-hmm. and it came to a head come the merge. Uh, this season, does, there's nothing been presented on Sega that's like that, in my opinion. Like Sega sure there's a couple people on the bottom. Nami, the only rift is like at the moment, Tevin kind of sees Soda as a threat, but it's not the same. So well, those two tribes seem a bit more tighter than what we saw last season. Mary's giving me a weird face. What well, do you think I'm just saying there's clearly people on the bottom in both tribes. Sure. And whenever you have people on the bottom and then you have new people added in the mix, like there's going to be a shakeup. I don't think nobody is that tight, especially when Venus is annoying people as much as she is. Yeah. And um, Liz is annoying people as much as she no, is. No, Liz, it, first off, sponsor of this podcast. Uh, we She is loaded with cash. No man can handle her, Mary. We haven't even gotten to that yet. Yeah, we're about to. Yeah, no, Liz is definitely near the bottom. I understand there are people <laughs> at the bottom, but. Well, I'm mm. just saying that that it's usually pretty obvious when people are on the bottom. And Venus is a fighter. She's a scrappy fighter. And if she gets a chance, she, she gets a mer- to emerge. She knows she can't work with Nami. She's going to try and do something. Anytime you have one flipper, you know. I think Kenzie could slide into the whole Sega group. Maybe not the Nami group because they seem to be. But how they're presented, especially with Tevin, they're maybe more game savvy. Where Sega at the moment kind of is a mess. I don't know. Sega just has not given us much of anything. I feel like Kenzie could snake her way through things, but Kenzie is definitely somebody who goes out in like episode nine. You're like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. Like you're pretty good, but just not good enough. And you were set up, you had a terrible start to the season. Terrible starts. Not always a death. It's not always death because look at the Tika three from mm-hmm. 44 that worked out just fine true but we didn't come out of tika thinking man these people are not like this is bad mm-hmm. we came out of tika thinking these are the only good people they had on the tribe right plus josh <laughs> it was tika three plus josh in that tribe because of that weird tribe swap they did that season so all right anyways kenzie for you is seventh for me she is ninth who is next our next player is liz she's on the nami tribe she still has her shot in the dark and she has nine confessionals. No other idols or advantages. How does Liz have more confessionals than um, Hunter? Hunter. Yeah, I was a little confused by that as well. I don't remember what happened in episode three, but she had four confessionals in episode three. So did she pay the show? Oh, she went on the journey. Did she pay the show? Yes, yeah, she paid the show with her stacks of cash. Yes, with her fat sacks of cash. Mm-hmm. She paid the show for extra confessionals. The only thing that makes sense. Sure. Rebecca said yesterday, maybe she's the one that can provide the million dollar prize the show the show cast her <laughs> so she could cover the cost oh yeah that or makes maybe sense. she'll outpace sia because sia usually gives money at the end of the season mm-hmm. player she likes maybe liz will do even more because she's loaded all right liz is at the bottom of her tribe not long for this game nothing this week really with liz yeah her only content was agreeing with tevin to get soda out because soda is a social threat other than that that, that was, was a her tevin scene though it was well, yeah, but she had a confessional talking about how she agreed with Tevin. Yeah, because, but it was, a, it was a scene. Yeah, it was that basically. Focused on Tevin. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I think she'll be a number for Tevin and Hunter. Um, and she might make it farther than some of the other bigger story threats. wise. That's her best bet right now. But, but yeah, she doesn't really have any strategic content. She hasn't been shown to be important to the storyline at all. She's not making any, any connections that we can really see. So, if she lasts longer than other people with stronger social skills, it's strictly because she's a number. How have we had seven hours of Survivor with commercials? And there's some of these people I'm still just like, who really is this person? Mm-hmm. We're at the point now where this is no longer a time. This is now a choice. Yeah. This is a choice by the show to make us not. We should know everyone here after seven hours. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some seasons would have killed to have seven hours in the first four episodes. And 46 got the luxury and I still am like, how do we spend so much time with Bonu? And I barely know anything about Liz. I know right. that she's loaded and that she annoys a tribe and that she's allergic to some foods. Yep. And no man can handle her cash. Mm-hmm. Though every man wants her. Right. It's a very, it's a paradox to have Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Liz just not, uh, not in the Tevin Alliance, but I mean, if she's willing to vote out soda, maybe she could, as you said, become a number for Tevin. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing. Like Tevin doesn't really have an opposition at the moment. Like it's kind of being presented as soda. Maybe it's Venus. I don't know. The Nami tribe is really the Tevin show. Yeah. And everyone else is just there. Yep. That's pretty much it. Yep. Oh, boy. This is definitely a season of Survivor I've watched on TV. All right, Liz. We love Liz. Uh, Liz, hopefully one day will for real sponsor this podcast with her stacks of cash. 
Uh, we can even do it through a Swiss bank account. I don't mind. <laughs> I don't. I hey, that's fine by me. All right, Mary, who's next? Wait, Liz is fourteenth for me. Oh yeah, no, Liz is uh eleven for me. Eleven. Well, you want her higher? No, I'm just confused. I mean, I guess I could move her one spot down, but I don't feel like moving her any further. That's fine. Okay, you, you have eleven out of fourteen is yeah, is exactly. not winning right. in my opinion. Right. So agreed. She's already won in life. She doesn't need it's to win true. Survivor. Okay? She's just there for the experience. She told everyone about all her, all her money and uh, people. Like, why? Mm, why? True. All right, go ahead. Move on. Next, we have Maria. She's on the Seeker Tribe. Still has her shot in the dark and an extra vote. And Maria has nine confessionals. Did Maria skunk this week? No, she had three confessionals. She has nine total. And though. she had her back, her sob story, her emotional whatever. She has skunked last week. Uh, yes. That's what it was. Yes. She got skunked last mm-hmm. week. Yeah, her emotional story was this week. And I talked about this with Rebecca and I mentioned how you said during the episode, well, I said it and then you agreed. So I don't know if this is really your opinion or if I pushed it on you. I felt like her emotional story was kind of rushed. No, I didn't. I, I agreed with you. you do yeah, agree. yeah okay. I felt that too. Yeah. Wasn't sure if I kind of said it and you were like, oh yeah, okay. No, no. It felt like, especially coming so soon after Tevin's backstory where we got to hear what well, it was like him commenting plus him talking to his tribe about it. Plus, you know, Nice epic shots plus home videos. Mm-hmm. And Maria's was like, she's sitting with her tribe. She talks to them. We get a couple of pictures and then she's still sitting in the tribe. And that's not it. as much cinematic flair to her. Right. Hers. Exactly. It was a little bit quieter, I guess. But, and hers was probably in real life more dramatic. I mean, Tevin's was just about fishing with his dad. Sure, his dad passed away. I'm not downplaying that. I'm just saying it was mainly focused on like him and his dad's relationship versus her, like, struggling through immigration and having all these challenges and maybe she was less open about it maybe she didn't share as much and so there wasn't as much to show but yeah it was definitely a little bit of a less impact i think tevin seems to they constantly seem to give tevin cinematic flair and a Mm -hmm. lot of his stuff yes because he's a bit dramatic as we've seen even in the secret scenes sure but maria has had the cut to malcolm and denise from a past season Mm -hmm. which while that's not too hard to do for the show is definitely a choice and she had it mm-hmm. with charlie we should have mentioned it, i guess with charlie that they did that yeah but it is well it's just one of the th- those things where it's like the only last time they did this was literally for austin and d when they should boss robin amber well if this is the case that means charlie's going out right before final tribal and maria's <laughs> winning based on how that's so right. is this a red herring for maria i don't know i feel like maria is so important in the first two episodes it's kind of like who's maria outside of her sob story and this one was a sob story but at the same time, they have made their, except for last week, they have taken their time with Maria. So she's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't ignore her. I mean, she's got her sob story. She's had uh, winter hints with the De- Denise and Malcolm flashbacks. But at, at the same time, I think that, you know, we do hear from her enough. We didn't hear from her last week, but we hear from her enough in what's going on with her personally and with her in the tribe that we know, we know Mar- Maria's at. At this point, you know, we should Maria's be- definitely one of the most visible people in this tribe. Right. Yeah. So in, in Sega, which is, as we've talked about, just not an important tribe right now pre-merge. So I don't think they're important in the long term, but we'll see. Probably not. But anyways, I think that she's definitely some a contender. I think that she's likable, not perceived as a threat yet, but is strategic. So another thing that could be going on with Sega and even with Maria is that they've done this before where while a tribe may be important later, the dynamics that currently are happening on the tribe are just not important to the show. Mm -hmm. So it could be that the dynamics being built here are just not important to the post-merge. Maybe Marie and Charlie post-merge just flip and just join the Yanu group. You know, that, how would that, that wouldn't be so seeing them and how they are with everyone else. It doesn't really matter Mm -hmm. because they're going to flip anyways. Right. And they want you to feel like they're betraying them. It's just, that's, that's something that could be out in play here Mm -hmm. is that we're getting to know these people but not not necessarily the Sega group is going to be important as a whole. Right. Unlike the re before, for example, which they took time on. Right. Exactly. In 45. So Mm -hmm. Maria is important for me. She's number five. For me, she's number four. I did move her down. I think she was, maybe she was, no, I think she was lower last week. I feel like she's moved down even for Rebecca. Rebecca moved her out of her top three, but she's still important. She's still top half for Mm -hmm. all three of us. Yeah. All right. Well, who is next? Next is Mo. From Mariah. C- yeah, Mariah from Sega. Who, by the way, said her favorite high school musical movie is number two, Mary. You've seen them all. Do you agree? I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> Mary, you've seen them all multiple times. I have no opinions. Your opinions are that you don't like them. Yes. All right. 
Um, okay, so we have Mariah. She's on Sega. She still has her shot in the dark, but no other idols or advantages. And she has 10 confessionals, five of which happened this week. And I'm honestly trying to think of what they were. One was about the idol hunt and how Jeff doesn't do this, you know. Jeff doesn't lie to us, yeah, even Jeff though he literally has. Uh, and I, I have no idea what the rest were about. Jeff lies all the time outside of the show. But in the show, I remember 41. And for, did they even know about the hourglass in 42? Like that, that was going to change everything? Like, I feel like both seasons, that is a lie. Especially 41 eh, is egregious. That's, I guess, could that be debated. never lies to us. The show's rewriting history. Oh, obviously, her other content was about jumping and how she couldn't yeah. jump. Sorry. Huge yeah. scene about jumping. Yep. But as you said, you thought you thought that was more Charlie. I felt that was, was really Mariah. more about Charlie than Mariah. Mariah. What was, she didn't even have to jump this episode. She could have literally just fallen off the platform <laughs> into the water. There was no need to jump. Yeah, you didn't really have to do the running start. And Her one inch of jump didn't do anything. No. Nope. It didn't really matter. It was so. funny, though. It was funny. Me, it felt like a secret scene that yes. they put into the show yes. to fill time. Mm-hmm. I agree. So but Mariah. Again, they chose that over Tim's secret scene. So. This is true. Yeah. Mariah is not going to win. No. But Mariah is not being presented in a negative light like a Venus. Right. She All her content is kind of just fun and quirky. Yes. And that's basically it. Basically. Even it. her tiny bit of. Oh, I think maybe Ben has the advantage or Tim has the advantage. I don't know. Which she's not even the important part of Charlie's Angels. Right. Exactly. Like Maria is. So, yeah, we're just not much for Mariah. So that's why she's 12 for me. Mariah for me is also 12. Wow. I had to give Liz a spot above her because Liz is loaded. Right. And Mariah, as far as I know, is not. Mm, makes sense. Watch, watch Mariah be like actually wealthy. And she's one of those wealthy people who doesn't talk about it. Mm. You know, there are. That's how that's true. Lo- old wealth, old money, as they call it. Don't don't they don't talk about how rich they are. They just are rich. Mm. New money talks about how rich they are. That's something I learned in a movie. and I forgot what movie it was, but it seems to be true. That makes sense. Sounds like a movie you would made me watch. Doesn't Possibly. sound like a movie I would have picked of my own volition. I have no idea. All right. But my own volition is High School Musical 1, 2, and 3. Come full circle on Mariah. All right, Mariah, we like her. Just don't see her winning. All right, mm-hmm. who's next? Next is Q on the Anu tribe, still has his shot in the dark, and he has 21 confessionals. Less 21. than people on his tribe, but still higher than anybody else on any other tribe. A positive about Q that Rebecca made a point of yesterday is that uh, the other two people seem to have not learned their lesson about treating Banu like garbage. And I, by garbage is obviously a big expression here because Banu is very emotional. I'm not arguing that. But Banu burned them all come the journey Mm -hmm. because he didn't feel like he was connected with them. He didn't Mm -hmm. feel like he was in with them. Right. And Q has gone out of his way to try to make Banu feel included, even coaching him. Though Banu at the time seemed to appreciate the coaching and then later reflect. He's like, I hate the coaching. I don't know what's going on there. My point is that it seemed like Q actually learned from the mistake and the R2 did not. And I want to give props to Q because that kind of ability to adapt could come in handy later for something else. It's nice, though, to recognize the mistake before it becomes a mistake. And Mary's giving me a look right now. What do no, you think? No, I just, I kind of disagree. I don't see that he did make any improvements at all. I think he's still treating Banu exactly how he treated him before, which was... Before the journey? Yeah, which was still kind of like, okay, I'm in charge. You're going to listen to me and you're going to do what I say. I think, if anything, Kenzie made an adjustment because she apologized. And she, it, there was a scene where she's like, even after we reamed him out at camp, he still ended down the journey. What in the world? So she like she recognizes, yeah, we reamed him out. Now she just that doesn't work. So she's gonna try the nice at approach. least complimenting and loving. You know, that's kind of how I saw it. Sure, maybe Q made a slight adjustment, but he was still in my mind kind of like being Boston Rob. Yes, I'm gonna take charge, and I, you're gonna do what I say. Boston Rob, who by the way, Deal or No Deal Island has quickly devolved into just the Boston Rob. Show. Yeah, <laughs> for those who are fans of Boston Rob, it is. I the four episodes in the show is just the it's Boston Rob Island, mm-hmm. which I thought we saw already in season twenty two of this of this show, but apparently that wasn't enough. Never <laughs> enough. Never enough. Never enough. That's another good musical. It is. Great show. Like You're one. welcome. All yeah. right. So I like you. You yeah. I I don't think that he will probably get far after the merge because he'll be perceived as a physical threat. He is getting content, but I mean, who on Yanu is not getting content? Yeah, so. it's just hard to sift through the Yanu content when everything is about Banu and how we're going to tribal. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. can we not? Yeah. So I'm not very high on Q. He's number 10 for me. I feel like he could make it further than Kenzie. 
based on threat level alone yes. at, well, from what we've seen so far. If, if, any, if anybody in the Air Tribes believes Banu, mm-hmm. at the moment, they have no reason not to. Right. While Bonnie was an emotional mess, they don't know that's Bonnie all the time. They just thought Bonnie was having an emotional breakdown that one time. Because mm-hmm. that's what most normal people do. Mm-hmm. They have an emotional breakdown. It's usually not for days on end. Right. In Survivor. It's usually like, here's a, I had a moment. You know. It was a big moment, though. It was a him. big moment. It was a big moment. But Ben, who's empathetic, and I believe, was it Liz was the other person there? Yes. Liz probably has people crying and kneeling at her feet constantly yeah. for cash. Men in particular. Mm-hmm. But Ben seems like an empathetic person. So he probably took Bonu's information and did not think Bonu's just being dramatic. Right. He probably, I mean, why would you though? It's the only information you got about the air tribe. You take it and you run with it. Cool. Mm-hmm. I can put a target on other people who are not me. That sounds mm-hmm. good to me. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you kind of like, uh, you know, Yanni tribe comes out. Of course, all three of these people are closer. They voted off three other people. Mm-hmm. It's like Bonnie's information at the moment was important, but is it going to burn Q and Kenzie and Tiffany now? I don't know. Right. I don't know. I mean, sure, they're close. Well, no, duh. They're on the same tribe. True. So, I don't know. Kenzie, I feel like Kenzie might get the brunt of that because he specifically said she is the most. Yes. And Q was not labeled as the most. Mm-hmm. So I feel like Q could make it further than Kenzie. It's possible is q meant for a final three at the moment mm-hmm. i feel like he is a zero vote finalist if he is yeah if he makes it that far if he but makes it that far physical threats as we know go pretty quickly after the merge <sighs> man him and hunter are gonna have a target on their back come the merge yep. just based on their physical just based on how they look physically and poor q has been pretty good in challenges I and mean, he did win them the yeah. reward challenge so he's no slacker yeah yeah but as i said q kind of talks like in a i don't know if it's the right word but military mm-hmm. just very straightforward here's the point yeah and, and and just the it's the way he also talks it reminds me of people in the military mm-hmm. so anyways i don't know if that's gonna be everyone's cup of tea it's worked fine on yanu but yanu's also been in a war right exactly <laughs> yeah it's it's a his type of personality it will jive with some and it will not jive with others yeah like i can just tell all of siga already is gonna be like what is cute him and like? ben yeah imagine them talking right it's going to yeah. be who, what alien are you? Basically? Yeah. <laughs> Not the yeah. same person at all. Yeah. So anyways, Q, where do you got him ranked? 10. I have him ranked eighth. All right. Who's next? Next we have Soda. She's yes. on Nami. Saws are shot in the dark. No advantages or idols. And let's see. Soda has 11 confessionals. My big question about Soda is, do you feel like she's really truly embodying the nature of Survivor 42 like she wants to play? I, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> She's playing pretty hard. She said I will she wanted to play Survivor 42. I just didn't know if she was accomplishing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was called a big threat this week because of her social game. I, I thought it was pretty fun editing when she was like, I'm the queen morale of this tribe. I just want to be fun mm-hmm. and goofy. But at the same time, you know, we have a lot of downtime. We get to talk strategy and, and then cut to her, like talking to every person on the tribe. And Tevin does the same thing, but it's presented as soda yes. is the target, yes. not Tevin. Yes. So, I mean, it's true. Soda and Tevin are both the biggest social threats on their tribe. Mm-hmm. And they seem to be pretty tight with each other. But Tevin is the one that's like, I got to take out my biggest threat, even though she's my best friend, whatever. Yeah. Even though we click so well. You know, she's the biggest threat and I've got to take her out. So I I think that if Soda is not aware of this or doesn't become aware of this soon, then, yeah, this is definitely like she's not going to win a fight against Tevin. Everybody else follows Tevin no matter what. So the question is, how soon is this going to come to a head? Is Nami going to go to travel next episode right. or are we waiting until the merge for this face off? Because it kind of has been established previously. I feel like I feel like Soda versus Tevin. This is not come up. This is not the first time I heard about this. Mm-hmm. I feel like I remember this. I got uh, I got a lot going on, but <laughs> <laughs> just I'm working on like I so many Survivor seasons at once. Okay, right. but this is definitely one I'm watching on TV right now. Well, and Soda versus Tevin seems like it was being established before. Here it's coming not to a head, but it's being built up. Mm-hmm. So, yes. like a good WWE story has to end sometime, mm-hmm. ideally during a pay per view. But every week's pay per view for Survivor. Right. So which week is it? Which pay-per-view are we going to see it during? I don't know. I don't think it'll happen to the merge because I don't think that they'll lose, honestly. It's Hunter possible. Hunter is killer in these challenges. Yes. It, 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 there is a possibility that for some reason Hunter sits out a challenge and they lose one, I guess. And then Soda goes home. But I see her making it to the merge. And if she gets wind of this, you know, betrayal mm-hmm. before then, she could definitely jump ship. Yeah. 
But I don't, I, I, for some reason, I just don't see her as a, a winner because we're, we're shown that Tevin's going to win this fight. Like, I really Bruh, feel like Tevin's yeah. going to win the fight. Bruh. So I don't know. She's, she jumped down for me. She was higher on my list last week, but she's only eighth. She's a hurdle in the story of yes, Tevin. Yeah. She is the current hurdle. That is not the last hurdle, just a current hurdle. Uh, for me, Soda is ranked number 10. All right. Who is next? Next we have Tevin. Okay, number one. Number one. Number one. Yes. Every week I'm going to say it until something changes, number one. Mm -hmm. And it is not close at the moment. Right. They take so much. Sorry, give me the stats. I got so much of Devin. So Devin is on NAMI. He has his shot in the dark. He has an extra vote. He only has 13 confessionals, but it is tied for the highest on his tribe. Yeah, 13 only looks pale in comparison to the purple tribe, not in comparison to green or, or, or orange. Right. So Devin. He had the slow-mo shot in the theme song. He has Andy Griffith Alliance. He opened the season with his narration. Now, keep in mind, the last time that happened was Carolyn. And then mm-hmm. Carolyn was in the finale. She goes to Final Tribal. But before Final Tribal, they were like the last confessional of the season, mm-hmm. where it's kind of like it harkens back to the first one. I feel like we're going to get that with Tevin. I feel Because like, they talked about that in the On Fire podcast during 44, mm-hmm. where they said, we did this for Carolyn because we knew it would be a really cool way to wrap up the season at the very end, having her do another confessional. Like that. Well, wouldn't it be amazing if Tevin gave some sort of epic confessional leading into Final Tribal? Right. About how important, you know, that's that full circle stuff. And they talked about how much they liked it and how they, I don't know if they talked about wanting to do it again, but they really, really liked it. Mm -hmm. And I could see them doing it again because they have somebody who has, Tevin is beautiful. Tevin needs to be a voice actor. Yeah. I don't know (laughs) if an actor, I don't, I'm not, I, it's not my job to cast people, but his voice is beautiful and he should be a voice actor for sure. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, so they right. took advantage of it. Anyways, point being is Tevin got the Andy Griffith Alliance. Tevin has this. Uh, they did the song with Soda this week, which we should talk about in Soda. But really, um, it's really every time they came with Tevin, they give it extra flair. Tevin, mm-hmm. they like what they did a whole piano bit for his mm-hmm. music, right? With Soda. Yeah. Yeah. He was Hunter's imitating. Over the side, like, are we doing camp song still? Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Tevin, they just like it feels like at any point. They give him extra love and attention and care mm-hmm. to the point where it's like, man, is this, is this, is he going out for, is he not, is he not going to win fire? It's possible. Yeah. That's yeah. what it feels. It feels kind of like that's like, it's too obvious to the point where it's like, we're supposed to root for this guy and he's going to go out like a Cody in 43, like, or a Jesse in 43 mm-hmm. even where it's like, we really rooting for them. They done screwed up at the very end, which is possible. And idol could change everything. Well, that's why I think it's almost a positive that he has fewer confessionals at this point is like they're not that they're hiding him no but we have seen i mean he has secret scenes that have been cut that are all negative negative content all negative so like Three. it's really to me it's almost like he definitely could be the winner i almost don't want him to be though because i i want want to be surprised i don't like that if it's going to be telegraphed this early and we d- usually don't get telegraphed this early but it's just really hard to ignore all of his hints i mean everything about him is positive There's too much he's running his tribe everyone loves him from what we if he's not in the shown. finale i'd be shocked oh yeah he's gonna be in the finale like if he's not in the finale i'd be blown away by right. what choices they were making here even during his sob story as we said his emotional backstory mm-hmm. they spent extra time and more flair on his as you said, Maria's was kind of like bog standard, mm-hmm. which right. only was made apparent after seeing Tevin's. And right. How much attention and care was given to his. Mm-hmm. And it's like, does the show love Tevin or what? Right. Exactly. You know? And Tevin is the one. Soda could be out there saying the same thing of, oh, you know, Tevin's a threat and mm-hmm. he should be. You know, we should get him out. But we're seeing Tevin taking the initiative, at, you know, from our perspective, from all we all know, we, all we know, for yeah. all we know is Tevin's taking the initiative. And going to get big threats out and going ahead and building those alliances and having those conversations about who they should target. So, yeah, it's just like the show wants you to love him so much. How can you ignore him? His nemesis is Venus at the moment. Mm-hmm. It's not really Soda because Soda's supposed to be with him. And she might right. end up being, by the way. Yeah. It just could be just a thing right now where he recognizes her threat. And that could come to a head later on right. in the season. But Venus is definitely the threat and she wants she's she's after it seems like she's after hunter in particular mm-hmm. but we'll see we'll see how that uh pans out you just you know, can't you can't ignore tevin you cannot you literally cannot tevin is the most important person in the season and on nami mm-hmm. and if he was on sega uh i think you'd vibe with them too that's the thing oh, we yeah. to the merge you'd vibe with uh, we say q who is he gonna vibe with mm-hmm. 
not a wide selection of people, but Tevin, I feel like we'll get along with in the new era survivor. Tevin fits right in. Right. Let's put it that way. The candy coated sugar casting of the budget era. He fits right in with a lot of people that they yeah. cast. I agree. Prior seasons wouldn't have been Tevin's thing. This mm-hmm. is Tevin is cast perfect time for him. Well, I think that he really is very good at connecting with people and with maybe not like just kind of a chameleon, like becoming who come a, come a, come a, come a, come a chameleon. Yes. Becoming who the other person wants, or, or being able to speak to what the other person wants and have conversations with those people. Like he knows how to connect. Some people are just good at that. The thing is, Kenzie does the same thing, but it's, but her, yes. she has negativity. Yes. Kevin doesn't get that negativity. That in the show. That we see. That's yes. all that matters. Yes. yes, I know. In terms of analyzing the winner, that's all that matters to mm-hmm. me is what is the story telling me? Right. We get some comments. People are a little bit confused. They're like, oh, analyze the alliances. Well, here's the thing. That what's important to Survivor is the story being presented. This is not, well, I'm not looking at a sheet of paper with alliances and names. Mm-hmm. Looking at a story being told. Story being told is Tevin, 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 Tevin. Tevin's always in the right Tevin's never in the wrong, and when he's in the wrong, we cut it from the show. We put it in secret scenes. Yep. That's it. That's, That's all it. we need to That's know. That's all we need to Tevin's know. Tevin's number one by a mile. Number mm-hmm. one for you? Yes. Number one for Rebecca? Yep. All right. Who's next? Next is Tiffany. Who, can we say, I think that's everyone's number two. Is it not? It is. She's not my number two. She's not your number two? No. She's mine mm-hmm. and Rebecca's number two. Oh, and Rebecca's number three is Jem. I missed that earlier. Sorry. So number two for me is Tiffany. Go ahead. So Tiffany is on Yano. She has a hidden immunity idol and she still has her shot in the dark. She also has one of the highest confessionals at 28. She is the, she is the idol that uh, Bonnie was looking for. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the one he was begging people. When he to was find looking, I was him. like, why are we wasting time with this? We already know Tiffany has it. Mm, yeah, I have no idea. It's like Bonnie went through the five stages of grief mm-hmm. in that post immunity challenge. Yes. What do you think about Tiffany? I love Tiffany. I think she is a great player. I think she's going to outlast both Kinsey and Q. Um, Agreed. I think she's strategic. She's social. She's good in challenges. She's been able to survive so far, and I think she'll continue to do so. Her negativity is always justified based mm-hmm. on what the show is telling us. Right. Yes. She doesn't have a lot of negative content, even though there could definitely be some. She literally dunked on Banu and Jess, and the show always was like, "Yep, she's correct." Yeah, she's correct. Yeah. So. She's definitely a major character. I mean, a lot of that is because she's on Yanu, but at the same time, I think um, she's going to go pretty far. I don't know. I I don't know how her chances are after the merge. Um, I think she's going to be a free agent that's going to latch on to some Mm. alliance that, and so she'll get carried probably farther, but I don't see her making it to the end. I I don't know. She didn't have a lot of. Well, Tiffany has that. So we got to mention it. Tiffany has a slow-mo shot in the opening. Yes. So. If they are copying, which they tend to do, by the way, between like 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, maybe they tend to copy a lot of their choices. Mm-hmm. And if they're copying the choice, choice from 45 and it's not just a red herring because they did in 45, mm-hmm. then that means that she is a contender for final three. Yes. No, no, I agree. I just don't see her winning. Oh, you think she gets there and loses? Yeah. You think she could lose like Tevin? She could lose to Tevin. She could lose to Hunter. She could probably even lose to Charlie. I don't think she loses to Hunter. I know we like Hunter. I don't see her losing to Hunter. Sure. I know we like Hunter. I mean, I'm I'm pro Hunter. I I don't see Hunter currently based on what we've seen so far. I mean, he has good potential to win. He isn't right, but he's below Tiffany for me. So I just see Tiffany beating Hunter in a in a in a head to head at the moment. But it's also so early. Yes, it's very early. I guess my thought is, you know, there's going to be absolutely no Yanu on the tr- on the jury, basically. Yeah, she's going to convince everybody else. So she's so going to convince all the other players, which is possible because she'll have the from rags to riches story if she does make it to the end. <laughs> to be fair, Jam Jam did the same thing. Yeah. He only had Carson and I, and I only Carson even voted for Carolyn. So he only had Carson on the jury as a locked vote for him. Jam Jam is a much different person. Yes, yeah, much different person. I understand. <laughs> I, I don't. I like Tiffany. I just don't think she has a good chance of winning. I don't know. I, I have her fifth. I'm not like dunking on her. I don't yeah. think she's way in the bottom. I think she has a good chance. Yeah. I think there are other people who are more likely to be here, though. And our winner rankings are based on potential to win, not what place do we think everyone's going to finish. Yeah, I no, got no, some no. confusion on that yes. in the comments last week. It's like, no, it's, this is potential to win. Not. I don't necessarily think that Tim is going to get finished in 14th. He might. 
I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm just saying that's not how I ranked him. Right. So, no, no. This, this is, is more like potential to win. If we went to Final Tribal right now. If everyone went to Final Tribal yeah. right now, we had a 14 person Final <laughs> yeah. Tribal. Who would win? <laughs> no one, because no one could vote. You know what I mean? Is. That's yes. what we're talking yes, about. Yes, exactly. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. So. So for me, Tiffany's number uh, two. For you, she's number five. Yes. And for Rebecca, number two as well. I'm pretty high on Tiffany. We'll see how it goes come mergatory and whatnot. We just need Yanu to not be the focus of the episode for me to really sift through the Yanu content. But, Agreed. Uh, yep. All right. So Mary, who is next after Tiffany? Next, we have Tim. Okay. <laughs> Tim is last. All right. Who's next after Tim? Tim is last. We want to even rake him. I have uh, Tim is last. He's my last ranking. Okay. He's 11th for me. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. So who's next? Venus. Venus. Venus has her shot in the dark. All right. And Venus. she has 13 confessionals. Well, I still don't get <laughs> why people are so enamored by Venus. I've had people try to explain it. I, I guess I got a thick head this season. I don't get it. I got, when do I not have a thick head? But I especially have a thick head with Venus. I don't get it. I get how she is a main character. I don't care how she's going to win. Yes. I get I get the main character, but mm-hmm. I don't get the winning part. Though she did get skunk this week. And I gotta talk about that. I didn't really talk about with anyone else. In prior seasons, if someone got skunked in an episode, no confessionals is what that means, then I would th- write them off. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I'd write them off. I think I started that with 42 in particular, where I was like, no confessionals. That's usually a death sign. But in 42, we only had 60 minutes, so it really was a death sign. Mm-hmm. And in here with 90 minutes, it's is it even more of a death sign. Because that means that Tevin has a death sign. That means Venus has a death sign. Maria. That means they're really screwing with us. Either it is not a death sign or it is and they're presenting everyone with death signs as important. What is, what is going on? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're screwing with us, Mary. And I love it, but they're screwing with us. Yes. So what do you think about Venus and the death sign? Um, I don't think it's the death sign this season because so many people have been skunked. It's not like just one or two. It's one, two, three. Three, four, five people. Can you so name all far. those people who have had zero yes. professionals? Yes, Maria, Tim, which he's had double, so that, that's a big death sign. It's back he's to had back two? weeks. Back to back that's weeks. That's why Tim's we had skipped no his section. Yeah, the so Maria, Tim, Soda, Tevin, and Venus. I mean, Soda, Soda Tevin, and Venus. Yeah, so those are all major players in our, in my opinion, except for Tim. It would have been crazy if somebody in Yanu got skunked. Yes, that would have been crazy. I mean, <laughs> I mean, obviously, Bonnie got thirty-five. They couldn't spare any to any of these other people. No. Apparently not. Apparently not. So I, I think it's a it's a choice. I think they are messing with us a little bit. Yeah. And uh, it's I like being messed with. Yeah, by it the is way, interesting. In the story, I, mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Venus, I think that no, it's not a death sign that she got skunked this week. I think she's definitely still going to be a character. I think she can make it to the merge, and I think that she could find you know a new alliance with somebody from a different tribe. The Yanu tribe. It's possible. They love the negativity. Mm, but that's not a, that's not enough numbers. Well, it's there. three people as of right now. It's assuming they don't go to travel next week, that could be four with Venus. That's four as we see can run a game. We saw it's Reed true. before do it last season. It's true. So again, I think she could make it far. I just think that so far, no one will vote for her at the end. She has a slow-mo shot in the beginning too. And all four people have one. We have to consider this is possibly a final three is from these four. And she's had a sob story. So She's had an emotional backstory. Mm-hmm. So... And we're presented. And when Randon was pulled from the game, we cut to Venus. Yeah. And that's another thing I've talked about where it's like an important event happens. Who do we hear from? Mm -hmm. Because that usually is an indication of a main character. Right. Sometimes the winner. That's why she's not last for me, because she does have some positives. Um, But most of her content is in a negative light. So a losing variety. Right. So I don't think anyone is going to vote for her if she makes it to the end. 78% of people on my poll voted that she is a villain. Or sorry, 60. I forgot. I got pulled up the numbers. I give you the numbers exactly. For me, she's number seven. Sorry. Yeah, for me, she's ninth. So I did a poll, Mary, and 78% of people said Venus is going to lose. 63% called her a villain. Yeah. Between the choice of hero or villain, because Survivor loves their black and whites. Mm -hmm. There's not, there's a little, they've gotten more gray area in terms of people and their dimensions since they've gotten more time. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's been hero or villain, smart or dumb players right. like really it's all it's ever been yeah so 78 percent say she's gonna lose 63 percent she's say she's a villain which is kind of what i was thinking but we'll see i mean i hey if venus is the winner that's gonna be a different winner at it yeah i don't think we've had a winner like if venus wins a winner like venus so i'm open to the uh, to the possibility it's gonna happen yes i just don't see it at the moment she needs to topple nami mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That's how it's being presented at the moment. Yeah. Like I Tevin's sh- running the show. She needs she to would have Tevin. a very long, hard row to hoe, but it's possible. But also it's a little bit easy because Hunter keeps winning them immunities. So really you only got to deal with the second half of the game, not the first half. Well, sure. She's probably going to get carried to the second half of the game. But at the, but at the same time, like she hasn't been able to play the game. There's no opportunities to take these sure. people out. So I, she's lucky they haven't gone tribal because I think she would have been oh yeah out in the first two votes yeah. for this tribe. Mm-hmm. Lucky she wasn't on the hot mess tribe. Yes. Yeah. All right. Is there anyone for Venus? I think she's the last player, right? Nope, that's it. Okay. Well, that's it for this week, everyone. Check out our Patreon if you want to see these podcasts early. If they're all ad free on there. I also got many videos up on there that have not been released yet on YouTube. You can also pick what I make on there. And also next week, again, Rebecca will be doing winter analysis. Mary will be doing our weekly breakdown Woo-hoo. just for next week. Mary, are you looking forward to being up late with me again? Uh, not necessarily, but I do. <laughs> I do miss talking about the episode proper. Do you feel a little left out when I am making loud noises and at night talking to Rebecca and you're like, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> no, no, okay. no. <laughs> well, get prepared. It's happening next week. All right, well, we thank you all for listening and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.